Hi everyone, this presentation is on setting up a Darwin data science environment and is a follow-up to our blog post under the same title recently. Uh, some particulars uh, that weren't discussed in the blog post will be discussed here, such as additional languages you could add to the stack and other, uh, other considerations that are more appropriate to discuss in a video setting. Um, in terms of prerequisites, a functional understanding of data-driven research uh, will help you follow the contents of this presentation quite well. Uh, it's typically suitable for data scientists, quants, researchers, traders, investors, quant developers, or any developers really interested in exploring the Darwin data set. Agenda-wise, we'll start off with the requirements and setup instructions for a typical data science environment, or at least a sound start to one, uh, that would allow you to get on um, and embark on uh, Darwin research fairly quickly and well, uh, conveniently. Uh, the required uh, libraries, um, data science libraries that you'll need for the languages we've chosen uh, for this stack, Python, R, and C++, that we'll describe the reasoning for and the particulars for shortly. And finally, Darwin datasets, the, the crux of this whole uh, presentation, how to get them, where to get them, and how to import them into your environment. So let's begin with um, some key points. Uh, at the end of the day, all researchers have their own preferred R&D stack. In, in our case, we've chosen Python, R, and C++, uh, with C++ having limited involvement um, unless you get to a point in your analysis where you're, uh, you've created some model where, it, where there are intense calculations going on, and if that model is developed in R, for instance, you may benefit from having some lower level C++ modules loaded in via RCPP. Um, Python is quite self-sufficient, very powerful and fast, as we'll discuss shortly with NumPy and Pandas, uh, the libraries there, and providing ample um, space in terms of speed and functionality. So it's very unlikely that at this stage you will need anything to enhance that functionality in terms of speed and performance. So we'll continue with Python, R, and C++ for the remainder of this presentation and describe why we've chosen them and how you can go ahead and set up your environment for each of these. Um, Python, uh, firstly, in terms of why we've chosen these uh, languages for our stack, Python is firstly very easy to understand, very approachable programming language, very powerful programming language, and it comes with a large base of core libraries for machine learning, AI, and statistical research, which is obviously uh, important, but uh, moreover, it's very convenient that they ship in distributions uh, as a factory default. In R, we see a free, robust alternative to a commercial environments such as MATLAB. Um, and it's very powerful, is open source, and um, there is no shortage of community support in R as well as packages uh, from multiple contributors across the globe. So it's a well-supported well and uh, free environment for you to substitute for, say, commercial entities like MATLAB. Um, C++, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we, we will use C++ primarily via RCPP for very particular uh, situations where speed and performance after you've exhausted all manner of super efficient programming in R, if you're still unhappy with your speed and performance on a given set of calculations, you may wish to consider writing modules in a lower level uh, manner, employing C++, writing the modules in C++, and loading them into R via RCPP. Obviously, you would need to benchmark whether these uh, there is a performance improvement or not. But the reason we mention C++ here uh, for the moment is in a limited capacity. Should you feel that native R is not um, cutting it for you in terms of speed and performance, there is the option to write C++ code and import via RCPP, benchmark for the speed performance, and if the result is satisfactory, then loading them into your R application um, every time. Uh, viewers, as I uh, as I mentioned earlier, are of course more than welcome to either extend this stack. You could do so with Julia or other applications, um, or craft a completely different one should should you wish. So at the end of the day, the choice of a stack is a very personal one and depends on the researcher. Uh, but this stack is quite popular in terms of like a, a large community of data scientists around the world currently use this stack. Possibly just Python and R of this stack. So let's go over to the requirements in a bit more detail. For Python, we'll need the Anaconda distribution. It's a free package and environment manager for Python developers, and it's available via anaconda.com. Uh, just simply visit anaconda.com forward slash download, and you'll find your distribution there. 
uh, to download. Um, for R, we'll need two things. We'll first need the base R installation. Uh, at the time of uh, this publication, um, I encourage you to download version 3.3.2 or later. Uh, once you've downloaded and installed uh, the base R installation, you'll need R Studio Desktop. Well, it is recommended that you use R Studio Desktop. It's a fantastic ID for code editing and visualization in R, but there is no nothing stopping you from using a different uh, ID should you even wish to use an ID. If you are a hardcore user and you uh, detest using any IDs whatsoever, uh, then there are Notepad++ or Emacs or VIM are popular alternatives to keep you within the uh, terminal uh, editing situation without going into the IDs. But if you need a good ID to support you in both your editing, visualization, project management, sourcing to external uh, SVNs and... Um, Git, for instance, then our Studio Desktop is a very good free solution. Um, to download R, visit the CRAN R project link that is displayed here. This link is also available on the blog post that complements this presentation. Same goes for our Studio Desktop. If uh, you can visit rstudio.com forward slash products forward slash rstudio forward slash download. Um, if you uh, find it difficult to get this link off this presentation, simply visit the complementing blog post on our blog and the link should be there for you. Finally, for C++, uh, as I mentioned, in specific cases with R, we may wish to employ C++ modules. And for that, we'll need R tools. Uh, and that will be for compiling external code modules in C++ for subsequent use in R when necessary. So that too can be obtained from the CRAN project, CRAN R project. Uh, simply visit this link uh, or um, visit the blog post where this link uh, is available for you as well. Let's go over to the setup instructions. Uh, just fairly easy carryover from what we've discussed so far. You need to download and install the Anaconda distribution, selecting Python version 2.7 for now. Uh, we'll explain why in future videos we've chosen uh, version 2.7 for the moment. This will eventually be released, uh, upgraded to the latest releases, but for the moment, uh, version 2.7, so that future uh, videos that we are publishing uh, where Python version 2.7 is involved uh, are easier for you to follow along with. Uh, Python uh, Anaconda ships with the Spider uh, ID for code editing and visualization in Python, similar to our Studio Desktop for R. It's a very good ID uh, that fulfills um, uh, both code editing and visualization requirements quite easily. It's, it's free. It comes along with Anaconda. There's minimal setup required, and uh, therefore it's a good first choice if you're considering, uh, if you're looking for an ID. Um, Jupyter Notebook uh, also comes free, uh, ships with Anaconda. So if you wish to compile your research and share with um, colleagues or academia or us at DarwinX Labs, uh, it's a good medium for you to compile code in real time, add your descriptions. It's just a convenient way to share your share your research uh, with uh, friends, colleagues, academia, etc. In terms of R, we need to, as I mentioned earlier, download and install the base installation first, 3.3.2, and once installed, you download R Studio. For R tools, um, if you install, for instance, uh, base R version 3.3.2, find and uh, find, download and install the corresponding R tools version. So, for instance, if you downloaded base R 3.3.2, uh, find, download and install. Base, um, R tools version 3.3.2. Now, in terms of libraries um, that we'll need, we'll start with Python. Uh, these come already uh, factory shipped with Anaconda when you install Anaconda. So, in our case, we'll be in future videos, we'll be um, implementing certain um, algorithms or use cases or scenarios, hy hypotheses, uh, where these particular libraries will, you'll, you'll find they've been used very frequently. So pandas uh, for data analysis, uh, processing, restructuring, and cleansing. NumPy for numerical and scientific computation using high performance data structures and vector math. SciPy, which is uh, an extension of NumPy. Uh, with functionality and additional algorithms for data manipulation, visualiz visualization, and other tasks. Uh, um, Matplotlib, 
a very good library for generating two-dimensional and three-dimensional graphics. Uh, Scikit-learn, an extremely, extremely well-documented, extremely robust, and well-supported machine learning library, library that we will be using very frequently in future publications. And as I mentioned earlier, fortunately, all of these ship with Anaconda as a default. So if you've downloaded and installed the Anaconda distribution, these should already be installed for you in your Python environment. Um, for R, the following packages, we put together a list here, um, difficult to see here and uh, follow along. So if you visit the blog post, the complementing blog post for this presentation on blog.darwinx.com, you'll find that this list is over there followed uh, by code to allow you to just copy paste that code into your environment and download and install all of these libraries in one go for future use. Uh, the code is on the next slide. Uh, it's probably difficult to visualize here on this slide. So as I mentioned, please proceed to the um, blog post for this presentation and simply copy paste the code into an R terminal, execute, and you should have all these libraries download direct, downloaded directly from the CranR project repository. Finally, uh, where to get Darwin datasets um, and what to, how to import them into your environment. Um, at the present time, data up to the 29th of November, uh, 2017 for Darwin DWC's quotes is available via the Darwin X Labs GitHub profile. And this is available in both daily as well as one minute precision. In, uh, few, uh, in, in weeks following on from this presentation, in the next few weeks, we will be releasing the entire repository of available Darwins on the Darwin Exchange in both daily and one minute precision data from their respective validation dates. We'll, uh, we'll publish this data on GitHub and we'll also uh, add in corresponding readmes to enable you to follow along and know how to interpret a validation date uh, and how to aggregate data from one minute or create OHLC data or aggregate between timeframes and how to go about doing that while preserving the integrity of quotes and scores in the Darwin datasets. Future posts and video presentations will shed light on this in a lot of detail. Uh, we also periodically update this data set on GitHub, so check back every week or so for updates. Uh, this practice will be upheld up until we have uh, a working API, which we are working on, uh, which will obviously make accessing data on demand a lot simpler um, and uh, real time. So that is a huge plus. We're working on it. We'll keep you updated with uh, progress on that front. So do watch this space. Uh, finally, um, where to get these data sets on GitHub specifically. So this link, uh, if you can copy it from this presentation, that's great. If not, uh, the same link is available on the corresponding blog post on blog.darwinx.com. Data for DWC, as I mentioned, is available in both M1 and D1 precisions uh, and can be downloaded and imported straight into your um, uh, a research environment, R code for which we've displayed um, here now. So if you, if in your R Studio or R Terminal environment, execute the following code. This allows you to create a data table directly from data downloaded from our GitHub profile in both M1 and D1 precisions. And of course, um, there are many other ways to achieve this. Uh, but here's an example of how you could import this data directly into your environment straight from GitHub. Column one, importantly, uh, in this data, once you've downloaded it, your download will consist of two columns for the time being, quotes data. Quotes data has a timestamp column, which is in Unix POSIX CT format, and a, uh, column two contains the quote, which is the real-time quote as observed end of day at that timestamp in the deepest available decimal precision. So while on the website, on the on the Darwin Exchange, quotes are rounded to two decimal places, this data set will contain quotes to a higher precision should that precision be available, so say four or five decimal places. And that's it. Thank you for watching this video. Future publications, uh, both blog posts and videos, will um, go into uh, research where we'll actively use this environment and show you examples of how you could conduct various forms of research on the Darwin dataset, uh, all the way from preliminary analysis to advanced applications of machine learning on Darwin datasets. Thank you for watching.